So here we have a search engine result page for a query that says how to remove a sticker from a car window. So let's go ahead and walk through the things that we see on this search engine result page. So first at the top of every single result is a count of pages that meet the criteria that we've used. So here I asked this question, how to remove a sticker from a car window, and the search engine has looked in its database of pages, all right, we call that its index, it looks into its index, and says there are 1,130,000-ish results that meet that criteria, that meet that expectation. So I'm gonna display those, I'm gonna rank them in some way. This number is very useful when you use search modifiers. So you can adjust the search query to say, only show me results on a particular site, and it'll show you roughly the count of pages that it has uh, within the site that you've designated. So there's different things you can do. Just keep in mind what it's doing is it's looking in its database and its index and delivering the number of pages that meet that criteria. Okay, let's go ahead and jump down to the next thing on the page. This is called a featured snippet. Now featured snippets come in three different forms. This one is a two to three sentence answer that is represented here. That's also shown in lists and it's also shown in tables. <clears throat> so any one of those three things shown generally oftentimes at the top of the results is called a featured snippet. Now the featured snippet is generated from amongst the first 10 results. So the search engine has been empowered to answer questions in particular with featured snippets and it will go to any of the first 10 results the first 10 organic results and find what it thinks is the most accurate uh, answer for that query feature snippets do not always show up they can change uh in very short order. So if you do a search query now and you do it again in five minutes, it could be different. Um, but feature snippets are pulled from the first 10 organic results and the search engine is trying to answer the question as accurately as possible. So that's what a feature snippet is and it comes in three different forms. Down below that, often associated with feature snippets are these things called people ask, also ask boxes. The people also ask box is itself made of other featured snippets. So you can see here that for how to remove a sticker from a car window, we see that there are other uh, associated questions with that query. So how do you remove adhesive from car paint? How, you, how do you get a sticker off of glass? How do you get stickers off of a car? These are all other ways of saying that same question, or they are related questions. So if you are creating content, it can be helpful to look at the people also ask box and get a sense of maybe other ways that people are saying it um, or other ideas that are similar. If you open any one of the people also ask box, so if you click on the down arrow, what you'll find is that these are all featured snippets themselves. So the search engine is showing you one featured snippet and then it's also displaying other featured snippets that it feels confident it has an answer in. So that's what the people also ask box is. And then down below that in this example are the organic results. So everything above this portion of the, si of the page it could be considered a SERP feature. And here we actually have the organic results which have been ranked by the prevailing algorithm. So what the organic results are doing is they're trying to match the search intent in some way. <clears throat> the primary goal of the search engine is to deliver value to the user based upon the words or the query that they use. So you're gonna see a lot of different changes in the search engine result page as the search engine tries to give you the most value. So let's take a look at, at this example here. So we can assume that what the search engine is implying is that it says, look, when you ask how to remove a sticker from a car window, people probably click on videos a lot. And so therefore, after enough people click on videos, I'm just gonna start showing you videos in those search results. So the top organic result is a YouTube result, which is a video on how to remove stickers off of glass. So there's a video. What we can assume from this is we can assume that the search engine is interpreting our query and saying, look, the way that this person wants to receive this information, right, the most valuable result I can give is in the form of a video. That's what this means when we see that in the top of the results. 
Here's a different example. Okay, moving away from car stickers, we're looking at flower decoration ideas. What's the very first thing that shows up on this page? Is an image pack. Okay, so there's a bunch of different images. Again, we can assume that the search engine is saying in this way. My guess is that people want to see images of this, so therefore I will show images. It's trying to deliver the most value prop possible with as few clicks by the user. Now here's an interesting thing. Let's take a look at this result page, and then look at the previous example. When an image pack shows up high in the results, we'll notice that the images on this navigation tab shows up first. So images shows up first, but what if we go back to that one that has the video? Look at the little red square here. On queries where videos show up more regularly, you'll notice that the video tab shows up first. So you can understand something about the search query and the intent and how people like to learn or understand information based upon the ordering of that navigation on the top of the search results. So if shopping were to come first and you see a lot of shopping results, you can say something uh, pretty informed about what type of search intent or desire the person has when they're making those kinds of queries. So you can use all of these different features to understand something more about your potential user and about a particular search query to see if it matches up with the content that you have or the objectives you have with your optimization efforts. <clears throat> the main point is a good SEO is always paying attention to these minor changes in the search engine result pages and asking why is that happening? Why is it happening? How is it being formed? Where is the information coming from? There's always slight changes in the search engine result pages, so you have to be constantly thinking about what's changing and why it's changing.